Hey, buddy, how you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. You are really intently looking at something. Uh, well, I dropped the piece and I can't find it. Being interviewed and trying to do Lego at the same time, harder than it seems. Great uh, guest to have on, too. In the beginning, he was kind of like, as we all were in the beginning, how should we act and stuff like that. Now he's, uh, he's such a fun guy to be around. And then he said something about like a, a tramp stamp or something, and, and the girls were like, hey, where is that? What's this all about? I'll show you mine if you show me yours. I'm like, whoa, this is not that type of stream. Well, let me tell you a little something about me. When it's Saturday night, I need to blow off some steam. Welcome, Steve. How are you? Good, good. How, How are you doing, doing, buddy? Just hanging out, man. Just getting get done with my stream with Andrew talking about self defense and legal mindsets. Not legal mindset, but properly. So support. this is an appropriate stream to wind down after an Andrew Bronco stream. Good, I'm ready to party, man. I got my, um, I don't know if everybody's so sick of hearing me say, I got my death penalty case, but here it is right here. It's ready to be filed next week. My three months worth of work right there. So nice. my initial brief is done. So now I can at least relax for at least another couple days <laughs> until I get start getting cases in. When you get one of these cases, they take all the cases off your desk. Excellent. And We're I'm excited. going to fail spectacularly again at getting my demonstration, especially if I'm drinking for second. I certainly hope so. I certainly hope so. Cheers to a good build day. Okay, uh, maybe I should go ahead and get alcohol. Yingling for the win, y'all. This is fun. Thank you. This night, nice. boy, I'll tell you, man. Chicks that watch their guys play Lego. That's right. Nice. That's pretty cool. You know, we think it's hot. Yeah, they they go go finally, found, I'm on. I'm on. By the way, I am on two, Thank and I can. finally found the part. <laughs> yeah, you're not finishing this one. <laughs> no, no. I, I'm against it being a negative. I think it's a positive. Right. There's, there's so I much agree. negativity in the world, yes. and it's like if we can tell each other that you know I I like this about you. Be specific and be honest, but mm -hmm. damn it, be nice. And say I, nice things to people. Thank you, Steve. I have totally agree with that. So, Steve, how did you first meet Bronco? Just doing legal work, the law stuff? Well, um, it was the Zimmerman trial, and that was in my jurisdiction. So I, I don't watch trials unless I have to. <laughs> and that was one that I was afraid that was going to come our way. And so I was watching it for, you know, so that in case it came our way that we'd be able, because the records on that would be ridiculous, right? Yeah. So, so that's what I did is I, um, wait a second, this goes here. Um, so I was watching it. And then of course, as I was watching it, I'm looking for people to comment and legal analysis. And there was a, there's a website called Legal Insurrection. And they did a, um, and Andrew was commenting on legal insurrection doing a day by day. So I didn't have to watch it. I just didn't watch it. And he was the only guy that knew what he was talking about. <laughs> Most people don't know what they're talking about, right? And then so I sent, I sent him an email. Like this talk about simping. I, I believe you should always recognize when someone's good. So I sent him an email saying, I really like what you're doing. You're the only person I've seen that knows what they're talking about when it comes to this self-defense law and you know thank you for commenting and so he wrote back and you know we kind of established a relationship there and then occasionally i'd have a case as a self-defense case and i'd ask him you know what appeals and so i'd i'd you know throw him a scenario and say what do you think about this or whatever and then um and then he uh he would do the same like he'd have a florida case and he'd ask me something about florida law he'd email me and then he sent me his book and, you know, signed book and all that typical. And so we had a relationship for going for several years. And then I don't know what it was, but he was on Ricada's stream. I don't know what I was doing watching that, but I was on Nick's. <laughs> and then I'm on the, I'm on the, I'm in the background or whatever. And I'm commenting, I'm chatting. I love chatting in the comments section, you know? And then Andrew's like, Hey, Gazi's in the chat. Send him a link. And that's <laughs> so how you got on Ricada? Yeah, so I'm like, oh, okay. And so I show up and I'm like, what's this stuff? I don't even know what the hell it was. 
And then they're asking me to grift. Do you need to grift this? And I'm like, what's that? <laughs> I don't really still really quite understand the whole thing. I just do my thing. But say, what is, what is this go? I don't know where this piece goes. <laughs> but but like, okay, I, I agree. What I Everything that I've seen on the Anderson trial comports with what I've seen in other wrongful convictions. Okay, especially, and I saw that asshole prosecutor, excuse me, but you know, whatever his name was, I don't even know, but that Gravely. guy, Get wrecked, whatever gravely. that guy was, he was a complete jerk, and that, that to me is very comportable with other prosecutors I've seen that are very bad, and that's the kind of stuff that results in wrongful convictions. I'm very much against it. You know, I speak out against bad prosecutors all the time. Yeah. It's like, to me, that that's the kind of guy that should not be anywhere near courtroom as a state no. attorney because he was playing a lot of games and this is somebody's life it's not a game but he's right. playing these games about like um guilt or innocence about like thinking it's about his career and he's going to be the guy and you know but that's not this is about justice i don't care about your statistics i don't care about your win loss ratio i don't care about any of that stuff but unfortunately that's who gets in power people they don't know um well, I speak out a lot about bad prosecutors, and that's what I see in that guy. But I think that focusing on things outside of yourself, <coughs> like, okay, and it's, it's a, I hate to put it this way, but let's, what if, for example, you never, you'll never meet somebody. What if you're just going to be alone for the rest of your life? Let's assume that's the fate, that's the card. Oh, look at this. <laughs> no, let's assume that's the card that you're dealt, right? Okay, so that's that's the card you've dealt. It sucks and it's it's terrible. Okay, but you still got a life to live. Well, now what are you going to do? All right. So now focus on doing things, maybe making your life, you know, finding purpose in your life, making the world a better place, doing things that you would enjoy, finding doing things that you know, um, accepting that and then moving forward. And on that journey of life that you choose, there will be people along the way who have chosen that same path. And, and this is the thing is I think that then you get outside of yourself and you talk about something that's greater than yourself. You start, this may be more male advice, I don't know, but I think it goes for women too that, you know, just, just do follow that path. I, I know people that are so self-obsessed and they think that if they become obsessed with getting a you know getting a woman for example i want a woman i want a you know a mate i want a girl who's going to be my wife or this what the sex would be and all this stuff all right but then you're they're so hyper focused on that that they forget about what what they have to offer what they're doing in the world what purpose do they have how are they making the world a better place and they're miserable so it's like well why don't you just forget about that and do, and it's easy to say, and I mean, it's easy to say when you're married and you're, you're, you're not alone, because loneliness is tough, but go out in the world and, and don't be lonely. Go find friends, right. go find right. new things, you know, whether it be travel, maybe you can volunteer at the church or volunteer at the, you know, at the thrift shop or live life, do things that, that are, that life is offering that you can do out there. I know how to write legally and technically and nonfiction. I'm, I can do that. That's kind of my thing. But I want to write this fiction. It's much, much harder for me. So you're asking about character development. What I've done, and it's it started with an idea. I have imagery. And then I wrote scenes that expressed, expressed <coughs> images the best that I could, right? And then there's characters. But as I develop those characters, I'm thinking about, okay, well, what are their motivations? Why are they doing that? And then I'm putting them together in my imagination. And then they start dialoguing. And when they start dialoguing, they start really developing. It starts fleshing out. So providing backstory and providing, and also the world. Yeah, Dragon Riders of Pern. That was Anne McCaffrey. Um, so I've got a whole backstory. I've got a history. I've got a why. You know, there's religion and there's there's a faith element in it. So yeah, that was that's so I want to make that. Let me see if I can find a good paragraph to write read for you. But I'll, I'll give you this. This is a little little snippet. Ready? This is exclusive. I don't know why you're getting this out of me, but you are <laughs> because you love us, Steve. That's I why I love you, especially you, Valhalla. You know, I love you. Oh, I get the, the... you get no love. You're 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 <laughs> <laughs> you didn't read prepare. <laughs> <laughs> I do almost I all of my homework. 
All right, so let's see. This is um, Act 7. Okay. Ayohotep felt the world spinning as he he was falling in, as if he was falling into a hole. He felt his body begin to transform uncontrollably. His pale pink flesh grew scaly and gray. His body expanded, ripping clothes which whisked away into the swirling storm. Small white teeth grew into enormous fangs, and spindly fingers extended into long, sharpened claws. A tail lashed out from the figure as Hotep attained full dragon form. A cloud of dust rose from the thud of the fall, and the reddish-brown dust stretched off in all directions. Only on the horizon, there appeared to be dancing figures lit up by distant fires along a dist distant ridgeline. I gotta change that. The acidic air stung his flaring nostrils, but that was not what dominated the dragon's attention. The distant reddish glow illuminated... See, I got distant in there. The reddish glow illuminated a huge human figure kneeling over him. The image appeared to be Mage Lili, but his enormous form rose what seemed like hundreds of feet overhead. In the giant's hand was a clear glass-like container how could such a giant even exist in this world, thought Hotep. The dimensions of the space twirled in his mind. There is a black starless sky, so up exists, he thought. The reddish glow from the horizon suggested volcanic fire, and the scales of everything were off. Was he tiny? Was the mage huge? Confusion compressed upon his brain like a tourniquet. The landscape appeared utterly devoid of greenery. No life energy welcomed his soul. A thunderous cackling came from high above the stunned dragon. Your powers are greatly diminished here, worm, the giant Lily taunted, clamping down a glass covering over his tiny dragon body. Gotcha. Hotep sensed danger, but his mind could not form a response. He was trapped. Here, that's, that's a I liked it. See, I can't write like that. That was good. Please. Well, thank you for sharing with us. That was beautiful. Yeah, yes. thanks. well, that's a look. See, I'm already stepping on my next book because Brucey's the next book. But you know, it just keeps it just keeps going. You got to honor the muse, and you got to go where it is. And and Brucey to me is done. It's just getting those pictures done, sending it to the the getting the layouts done, sending it to the printer, managing that process. But it's to me, it's in the bag, and um, it's on pre order now. So. That's the one I need to be pushing, not my fantasy novel, because the fantasy novel is probably a year out, and it's going to be three books. So, but I want to get it. I want to get them all written before I do book one. I'm going to have them all lined up. Nice. Well, thank I you like, very much for joining us, Steve. If you yeah, go. that was fun, man. I got my beautiful flowers for my wife for her anniversary. They're gorgeous. Twenty fourth anniversary, and there we go. Good to we see you. We love spending time with you tonight. Thank you. Well, Thank I haven't been reading the chat like I usually do because I've been working on my Legos and doing all this other stuff. So th I'm sorry if I didn't follow y'all as much as I should. But all right, I got to get going. I got some oh, great night. Maintain. All right. God bless y'all.